Have you ever had a moment when you watched your favorite TV show, listened to your favorite song, or commented on a post from your favorite Instagram star and thought to yourself, I feel like I know them. We're, we're practically best friends. Maybe you feel like you share so much in common with this person or character that if you ran into them on the street, you'd be able to finish each other's sentences. Your favorite music artist seems to write lyrics that are so relatable to your life that it's almost like you have the same mind and are best friends. But eventually, this feeling passes and you realize, wait, I don't actually know them. They're not my real friend. We all realize that our favorite celebrities don't qualify as our real friends, regardless of how much we wish they were. But maybe that gets you thinking about your actual friends, the ones you spend time with every single day. In fact, you may even wonder, who are my real friends? Finding the answer to this question might be harder than you think. I mean, friendship is a huge deal in high school. Your friends are your people, your tribe, your squad, your crew, or whatever else you call each other. They're the people you text when you're going through a breakup, vent to about your parents, or spend every waking minute with on the weekends. Your friends play a huge role in your life right now. But if we're honest, I think we say that all friendship, real friendship, isn't easy. Finding people to hang out with every once in a while, we can all do that. But finding real friends, the kind of friends who stick with you, treat you well, and influence your life in a good way, well, those are a little harder to find. Maybe it seems like your friend group is always changing. You move to a new school, you switch classes, or take up a new hobby, and all of a sudden, the faces in your life change. You're making new friends, which is cool, but when your friend group is constantly changing, it's tough to build and maintain close friendships. Maybe you don't feel like you have real friends because you have hard to meet standards. Your friends don't do the things you want them to do. They don't connect with you enough during the week, hang out enough on the weekends, or remember the important details of your life. You feel like those are the kinds of things real friends do, but you don't have any friends around you who are doing them. Maybe you don't feel like you have friends. You aren't worried about finding real friends because you just like to have a friend. And for whatever reason, you struggle to connect with people your age. Maybe you aren't sure how to even find a friend at this point, and that's a hard place to be. Or maybe you're not sure where you stand with your friends. Sometimes it seems like you're left out of the group messages, or you don't get a voice in making plans, or nobody is inviting you to anything. If you were being honest, you're not sure if you're actually in with your friends or not, especially in a moment of life where the FOMO is real. No matter what your situation looks like, I think we can all agree that when it comes to figuring out real friendships, the struggle is most definitely real. But can I let you in on a little secret? Do you know what all of these thoughts and struggles about friendship have in common? It's the central idea that your friends aren't doing enough for you. When it comes to friendship, we all tend to focus on what we're not getting from the people in our lives. And in one way or another, we're disappointed in our friendships because we're looking at what our friends aren't doing. So instead of feeling like we have real friends, we may sometimes feel sad or frustrated and lonely. So what do we do when our friends aren't meeting our expectations? And how do we find real friends? Well, let's talk about it. As it turns out, friendship is not a new concept. In fact, the Bible addresses it. And one of the best examples of a real friend is Jesus. The Gospels, which are the first four books in the New Testament, are accounts of Jesus' life written down by some of his closest friends. One of those books was written by a guy who was arguably Jesus' realest friend of all, a guy named John. John was one of Jesus' 12 disciples, and those guys were the ones who spent all their time following and learning from Jesus while he was on earth. John even describes himself as the disciple Jesus loved. So when we read what John wrote about Jesus, we're reading what one real friend had to say about another. At one point, John writes about a very serious moment in Jesus' life. It took place right before Jesus would be arrested and sentenced to die on the cross. And while his disciples had no idea what was about to happen, Jesus knew what was approaching. With that in mind, Jesus gathered his friends together for one last meal together. Considering what was ahead of him, Jesus could have been looking around the table at his friends and thinking, what are these guys gonna do for me when all this happens? Are they going to prove that they're my real friends? But that's not what Jesus did. Instead of waiting to see how his friends would respond to him, 
Jesus decided to act first. Instead of being reactive, Jesus was proactive with his friends. Here's what happened. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had around him. No matter how many times I read this, I can't get over how strange the moment seems. In ancient times like this, people walked everywhere, sometimes in their bare feet. And I can't overstate this, feet were not remotely clean. What makes it even stranger is that the task of washing someone's feet wasn't normally something a friend would do for another friend. This job was usually done by a servant for an esteemed guest, someone who ranked higher in position. So why would Jesus do something like this? If he was God in human form, nobody ranked higher in position than him. Shouldn't those guys have washed Jesus' feet? I think Jesus did this for his disciples and closest friends to demonstrate what real friendship looks like. Jesus took the first step. He didn't wait for somebody else to do the work in his friendships. He didn't wait to see what his friends could do for him. Instead, he took a step to show them what real friendship looked like. He showed them the kind of friend he wanted them to be to other people. In fact, in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus said something that sums up his take on friendship. Do to others as you would like them to do to you. In other words, Jesus is saying that when it comes to relationships, we need to be proactive. We need to treat our friends the way we wish they'd treat us. But this is so difficult to do, right? Because let's be honest, we usually take the opposite approach. Usually, we react. We treat people the way they treat us. We respond to how they make us feel. If someone makes us feel angry because they aren't meeting our standard of friendship, then we treat them with anger. If someone leaves us out of a group text, you better believe we'll leave them out of our group text. But if we really think about it, we can agree that that's not the way we want our friendships to work. We want our friends to value us, include us, notice us, and be kind to us. We want to feel important to our real friends. And what Jesus shows us is that when it comes to friendship, we have to take the first step. We have to treat our friends the way we want to be treated. We have to make the first move.